Uh, hello everyone, welcome to our presentation. The title is Evolution, uh, the Monkey Business. I'm Ian. I'm Jeffrey. I'm Money. Emma. So our presentation is kind of be, going to be like a trivia aspect similar to what we do in class. I'm going to pass out some whiteboards. Let's get in now, uh, let's say groups of three. And then um, throughout the presentation we're going to ask a series of questions just to test your knowledge on the topic, make sure you're paying attention. And then at the end there'll be a, a big prize for the winner that you won't want to miss out. Okay, so 10 million years ago, Africa's environment was nothing like it was today. It was actually very green and like covered in rainforest as opposed to being dry and arid. And it wasn't until 6 million years ago that there was a change in this environment. And that's basically what this graph right here is saying. That there was a change, or rather a shift, from this rainforest, this real green environment, to a more dry and sparsely wooded grassland area. And that would be in the Awash Valley and the Omo, Tur no, this right. Omo Turkana Basin. And this, six million years ago, is where we believe speci speciation to have occurred. So that brings us to our first question. How long ago did we speciate with our least, last common ancestor of the apes? Like we said, we believe that um, our last common ancestors, which we're going to be talking about four of them today, um, the chips, bonobos, orangutans, and oh god, <laughs> um, also the gorillas. I always see that. Um, so we start off here. We have the chimps, bonobos, and then we have these long, very, very long words. Um, but the first main point that we believe started speciation was the bipedal walking. Um, and when comparing the molecular differences between chimpanzees and humans, we have a 99% similarity um, in the molecular DNA sequences. So the human mDNA sequences right here, and then the chimpanzee mDNA sequences right here, and the amino acid sequences for both are the exact same. So. This brings us to our second question, which is how close are we related molecularly to that of a chimpanzee? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Guys, points again. That's <laughs> amazing. Such a some big brains. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to contrast everything with the humans. Um, so back to the phylogenetic tree, we have the derived characteristics from there, and we also have um, the going from the bipedal walking, one of the biggest main differences was in the chest cavities. Um, so right here you have the monkey's chest cavity, and right here you have humans and apes. And you have your rib cage, your vertebrae, your scapula, and your clavicle, and it's all the same right here. Um, but one of the huge differences in the monkeys is that they are more deep and they're narrower. So that like led for the scapula right here to um, be more forward away from the vertebrae, which means that since monkeys walked on all fours, they were called quadrupeds. And when going talking about bipedal walking, the difference between humans and apes is that they have a more shallow chest cavity and their scapula is more towards the vertebrae. So this allows for us as humans to stand straight up and walk onto like the feet, as also seen right here in the modern human and right here in the modern gorilla. So from there, what actually makes a human a human? Um, as you can see, Armani will be my example. 
As humans, we have an S-shaped spine cord, which allows us to walk on two legs, count two legs, whereas our eight brethren have a more C-shaped spine, allowing them to walk on all fours as our money is showing us right now so greatly. Um, in addition to that, Dr. Cruz, can you pass me the monkey really fast? That monkey skeleton? Right. Yep. Okay, so everybody sees, can everybody see the monkey's pelvis? How long it is and how long and narrow? This is due to walking on all fours, whereas humans, we have a more bowl-shaped pelvis in order for us to walk on two legs and have balance. Um, in addition to that, you can see from the chart that along with apes, we have the one bone, two bone, many bones, and then digits on our limbs and our feet. Um, from there, we can look at skeletal differences. Um, in our beginning common ancestors, we can see the skull um, of having a larger brow, a smaller brain cavity, um, larger canine teeth because of diet, of meats, and the face protrudes forward. Best example is right here. See the large <coughs> protruding face, large canine teeth, and then you have a large nasal cavity. Um, this large nasal, nasal cavity continues into our next common ancestor, Homo erectus, having the large brow, nose cavity, and then the face also protruding forward. Next, we go into Neanderthals, which you can see now the weakening, weakening <laughs> of brow. However, you can still have, you still have the large nose cavity, and then you see also the inflation of cheeks. From there, we go to Cro-Magnums, which have the lessened brow, pushing back, and more protruding chin. And then we go into what we have today with modern Homo sapiens, having a softer brow, still having the large nasal cavity, and a strong chin. And then if you open up its mouth, and break its jaw, and break its jaw <laughs> you can see the flattening of canine teeth, and the flattening because of change in diet, including meats and vegetables. From there, we go into development. Well, first, we should probably have a question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the third question will be, what is one homologous structure of the modern gorilla? <coughs> Just need more. question would be, name, um, what is a one homologous structure of that of the modern human? Let's be specific here. <laughs> Think about spines. <laughs> Call the help if you want. see that the temporal lobes on both are in the same, in similar areas as well as the frontal lobes of <coughs> both chimps and humans. However, once we go into adulthood, we see a change in the shape and size of chimpanzees and humans. Whereas in the chimps, 
it becomes longer and more angled, and there's a stronger jawline compared to humans, where we see a more longer and more oval-shaped skull pattern or skull shape. And then from there, we go into our hypothesis of why speciation occurred. All right, so there's many hypotheses of why apes uh, speciated into humans. There's many driving factors that are believed to. But uh, our group decided on one uh, that is more apparent than the others. Uh, six million years ago when they speciated, we believe there was a geographical isolation, uh, probably some sort of rift that emerged um, isolating these two populations. Uh, I'm actually going to draw it out a little bit here. So we got one and then a rift. So on this side of the rift, there's going to be the usual uh, tropical like rainforest with all the trees and you know, all that stuff. And then because of the rain shadow that the rift causes, all the precipitation is going to be going towards the tropical rainforest, uh, leaving the precipitation for the other side of the rift, which will create uh, somewhat of a drier environment, probably some sort of savanna of that environment uh, with little rainfall. So because of this, uh, the, in the isolation, lack of gene flow between the two species. Um, the species over here had to um, evolve into, um, well, because of the savanna is a more open land environment, it doesn't have the usual tree cover that the rainforest had that they were used to. They could uh, climb the trees to look for predators, evade predators, things like that, but the savanna didn't have this. So the species that where this is when the uh, bipedalism evolved as opposed to quadrupedalism, walking on four legs as opposed to two. So the two-footed uh, animals were selected for more sexually because they were able to evade predators, search for predators better. They have to be able to kind of have their head on a swivel because they don't have the usual tree cover that they need uh, in the tropical climates. So this is when all these speciations started occurring because of the new environments they're selected for uh, sexually. They're the drivers that um, caused us to eventually evolve into humans. Uh, they had to be able to run upright and more open and to evade predators, things like that. Um, so eventually, uh, the species on each side, each side of the rift um, evolved so much because of the lack of gene flow that they were new species altogether. Uh, so this leads us to our fifth question, which is, from our hypothesis, what caused the geographica, geographical isolation that led to the speciation in our example? Sorry. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh, points all around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to show a video of um, kind of how the face of all these species have changed over the six million years. This would be six million years and close to a minute. We would also like to point out the fact that since evolution is not goal-directed, the habitats selected for each of the things that would help better adapt to each species for their environment. And we did not evolve from monkeys. Or apes. Or apes. No, that is not what this video is saying. It's just showing you the changes in between each one. And we see you got the big nose and the protruding brow. He looks a lot like our balloon guy. Good to see shallowing of brows, the softening and extrusion of cheek muscles, and the small, more narrow nasal cavity. And we're going to go fast now. All backwards. All backwards. Bonus question: Since we have a tie, we need a we need an exact answer. So, can any of the groups tell us what's the differences in the sequences, the mDNA sequence of humans and chimpanzees? 
this is going to be hard, so I, I need you guys to look really you hard look and focus. <laughs> What's You're not allowed to leave your seats. That's it. Whatever it takes. You just have to go one. Yeah. Oh, just one? Okay. Just one. Just give me one. Oh, she yeah. saw our board. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, Okay, so everyone ready? Three, two, one. Good. We have to have another bonus. Luckily, we do have another bonus. Oh, sure. Wow. So this one's going to be worth two points. And the question is, what continent did this speciation take place in? And everybody gets a piece of candy. You get 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 a piece of candy. Everybody gets candy. We're all winners. Thank you for playing. Thank you for being my audience. You cannot eat the candy live. Yeah. Candy. That's against protocol. Sorry, but thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Cruz. Thank you.